getting rid of things in my life and changing things and went through a lot and sort of deconstructed and reconstructed had you know my, my twins and and um, just I just needed a, a break and then I needed to be re-inspired which mm. uh, brought me to England actually so and clearly the way to get inspired is to play darts and <laughs> keep sheep is that right and <laughs> now sheep herding apparently. is that what is that what you do you know I there are sheep on my property there's a proper farmer who who takes care of them. so you're not actually hands-on kind of I, I did sheep actually cheering. I will say the, the closest I came is that there was a little poorly one born last spring that we we, we bottle fed and took oh, care of sweet. very sweet and we still have him and you know that's as close as I've come I'm sorry to disappoint <laughs> that's not in any way disappointing so your twins must have loved that as well oh no they did they bottle it you know they're quite aggressive when you bottle feed them but it's, it was it was does fun this mean them. that this sheep follows you around now because you, he did he, he, he would run he'd come every day I'd go out with a bottle and he'd come running and we feed, you know it was very sweet oh. and so has England become a bit of a retreat a, a retreat much. for you I mean a place where you feel good comfortable safe yes I, I really I'm I just find it so, it's just things I appreciate that I never have done before, you know, just even just walks and gardening and, and my sweet little village and, and uh, amazing people, really simple, you, what you see is what you get. Um, I've just really kind of adopted it, hoping that it will adopt me. <laughs> well, and I guess that the contrast being, inevitably, because of your, your, um, your dad, and the life you led before, the scrutiny that you've led your life under has been, I mean, I'm trying to think of anyone else uh, who's, who's had that kind of scrutiny from such an early age. I mean, how do you, play, how do you place that stuff now? I think that it's just separating, uh, keeping very normal balance, which I think my mom instilled into me early, just having, you know, it's separate, you know, the, it, the celebrity part is in increments, uh, for specific times, but keeping everything extremely normal so that you don't go too far, you know, one way or the other, keep your head straight. Mm. And you presumably um, have very you know, strong memories of your dad as well, wouldn't yes. you? Because you know, you, you would remember him extremely well. Yes. What are your fondest memories? Or I have a lot, uh, you know, a lot of it was just being alone with him. He had a, you know, set himself up in my room upstairs and had a chair and a table and a, and a TV. So at any time he'd be in there watching TV or just... With you. I think he just kind of took, had, it was like a, a retrieve for him to come in and sit there. So I could wake up in the middle of the night and he'd be there and we would talk and I would ask him. I think I, one time I asked him, um, I genuinely said, how much money do you have? And he literally fell out of his chair laughing. He, I don't know. I never understood why, because I don't know why I even asked the question. But I think I was starting to get this idea that yeah. there was some kind of difference between me and my friends. Mm. So I asked him anyway. But just little conversations that I would have with him um, on my own. Uh, now, there's a, there are some sort of melancholy themes. I don't know if you'd agree in some of the songs. I was just looking through some of the lyrics. Mm. And uh, one of the lines I picked out was, uh, maybe in another life I was a snake or a vampire. Mm. I own up. Now, vampire is a phrase you talked about before in relation to people who surround famous people. Right. And I think everyone will know who we're talking about. We're talking about your father, number one. We're talking about Michael Jackson as well. And I know you're reluctant to talk about those things, but that's an interesting line. And it's something, I mean, you must be hugely conscious of that notion of the people who surround very famous people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, it's something that you have to always learn over and over and over again. As good, I, I thought I was really good at it. I thought I was pretty good at spotting people and figuring that out because I was exposed to it so early in life and I saw what surrounded my father and, and, and what you surround yourself with is going to make or break you, that energy and those you know, kinds of people. So, you know, I thought I knew so much about it and could spot people and I was pretty good at it, but then I found myself completely surrounded by the wrong people and the wrong situations that weren't what I thought they were and I had to relearn all over again and I kind of started from ground zero which led me to literally sell everything I had in, in, in California and move into the middle of nowhere in England countryside. Um, and, and you said that you found you found the inspiration again because of that so what you know what did something suddenly happen or was it a gradual process that I think it was just being so far away and just seeing people that were normal and uh, loyal and knew right from wrong and uh, just simplicity and normalcy I found and that, that just actually that was all it took and just you know loyalty and um, I don't know I found things here to be more genuine and real 
which I found so and simple things you might not even think about but for me meant a lot like just you know um, being protective and just people being real friends so um, that that was refreshing and there, I mean, listening to the album, there are sort of hints. I was thinking that things like Johnny Cash the, and then Roy Orbison. You can kind of feel some of those influences coming through. Is that how you felt? In in terms of the writing of yeah, it, yeah, just some of the sounds, literally some of the, some sometimes the simplicity of some of the music. I, I you know the writers you know that I wrote with Richard Hawley at Harcourt and uh, Fran Healy, Sasha Scarbeck. It's strange because no matter which person I wrote with, this sound was just, just it was just you know sort of coming to life and. Um, it was, it's very organic, kind of Americana, and it all happened in England, <clears throat> which everyone in America found very ironic. So, Well, we're very pleased that you adopted the UK, so thank you very much, <laughs> yeah, and welcome. good to see you here you're today. Very thank you. Here. Um, you're at Bush Hall in London, aren't you, on the 4th of October? Yes, I hope so. And have you gotten to know Austin Butler a little bit? Yeah, I, I'm going to grab your arm. Yes. Um, a, a lot, a lot, actually. And I adore him. When you first saw him, what did you think? You mean in the movie? Yeah, just saw him, yeah in the role. Uh, it's a breaking news to the passing of our legendary singer Lisa Marine Presse. Singer, also a songwriter and a daughter of Elvis and Prince Priscilla Press has died. She died at the age of 54. Uh, more details are coming. We send our deep condolences to the family.